Welcome to the Pitcher Nail Down. I'm Jason Gilbo at JGilbo11. With me is Nick Tasso at the Inefficient 2. Taking a look at pitching on tonight's four game slate. Uh, kind of an, an odd four game slate because usually when this does happen, you kind of see a little bit more mediocre pitching, but um, pretty much all above average arms outside of really a few. Yeah, absolutely. There's eight guys going and probably about four or five are pretty decent, solid arms. And uh, three of them at least are uh, top tier right now. Yeah, definitely. And diving into the first game here, you get the Yankees and Red Sox, uh, Michael Pineda, Eduardo Rodriguez uh, pitching. And, and I was kind of intrigued with Stephen Wright. I think that would added another uh, arm into the, the slate. But obviously with him being scratched, uh, Rodriguez comes into play. Because he's really the only cheap arm, um, I think he could be worth a look because he is still a small favorite there at home. Obviously, this Yankees team against lefties is not that great. And Rodriguez has looked, uh, I mean, better since he's come back from, you know, that, that minor league stint that he had that he claimed to fix his, his you know, tip pitch thing that he was had going on. So I'm okay with the, using him in GPPs. Yeah, absolutely. I'm staying away from him on FanDuel, but on DraftKings when he's only 5,200, when, when you need a second starter, I, th I think he's okay. Um, like you said, this Yankees offense isn't that great. A-Rod's probably going to play tonight in his last game against the Sox, and I think that probably weakens the lineup as uh, we all heard what Joe Girardi said to him. So I just think he's in a pretty good opportunity, Eduardo Rodriguez, um, to kind of have a nice little outing against this Yankees club. Yeah, definitely. I mean, since that, that minor league thing, I mean, 3.63 FIP, I mean, he's missing bats, 10.6 swing strike rate in that time, 22% uh, strikeout rate. So just given the fact that the Yankees aren't that great against lefties and there are a lot of lefties up in the top half, um, he's still going to have to miss some bats. And, and you know, obviously, A-Rod's still a guy you, you do have to work around uh, a little bit, even though his struggles and obviously Starling Castro. So uh, outside of those guys, I mean, he should be able to kind of get through this lineup. And, and I think the quality starts certainly there. Yeah, absolutely. And at 5,200, that's really all you kind of really uh, are asking for, um, especially on this random slate like this. Yeah, definitely. And Pineda on the other side, I mean, uh, we saw Betts and Ortiz go down last night. Um, no news that they'll be in the lineup um, for today's game. Uh, obviously, Pineda is one of those boomer bust pitchers. I, I think if the Red Sox lineup does look as it is now, um, I could see using Pineda in the GPP format um, because he does have a, a, you know, a decent strikeout rate and this Red Sox offense really hasn't been what it was earlier this season. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't mind him even on both sides, even though his price tag is a little too high on DraftKings for me. But wait and see for the lineup, like you said, of uh, Ortiz. I bet you he'll probably be out even though uh, x-rays came back negative. It's just they're very cautious with him. Um, and then on uh, bets, I think they're probably going to play it safe and at least have them miss one game. So he, Pineda might see a really weak lineup tonight, and uh, that could really benefit him. Yeah, definitely could. So I think he could be an intriguing GPP option. And obviously both these guys are more GPP plays than anything. Yeah, absolutely. There's, these guys aren't some guys I'm itching to play, but uh, at the price tag on a small four-game slate, we might as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Angels in Cleveland next year. Uh, Cleveland, the biggest favorites on the slate, minus 220. Uh, Corey Kluber facing uh, Julius Chassin. Um, Chassin's a guy who I'm just looking to avoid altogether. He's one of those weak pitchers that I'm just looking to target against. And because the Indians' prices are, are really expensive and I want that exposure, uh, that's where kind of Eduardo Rodriguez comes into play if you wanted to get more bats in from them. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with you. Shasin's definitely a uh, easy fade on this slate. There's really nothing to like about him. Um, probably isn't a decent amount of Indians hitters, so I agree with you there. Um, and then on the flip side, you look at Kluber, and I think he – obviously there's three names that we all probably are gravitating towards tonight, but for me he's the number one uh, guy. He pitched a complete game last time out against the Angels, uh, only gave a couple runs, and over his last eight starts he's been extremely good. He's given up three runs or less in all of those except one outing. So I think he's kind of uh, in the zone and, and pretty much a lock to be one of the uh, – probably the highest scoring pitcher on the night. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, as you mentioned, he's, he's been dominant over the last stretch. I mean, second half, 29 innings, um, only allowed five run runs in that span, 31 strikeouts there as well. 
Uh, he's a guy who misses bats. And, and even though the Angels don't strike out a ton, Kluber's a guy who just kind of makes up that difference because he has such high swinging this stuff. Um, and we saw that earlier. I mean, I believe he racked up about seven or eight strikeouts against the Angels in that matchup. So no concern for me. I'm, I'm definitely in agreement uh, that he's kind of the top play tonight. And, and his price really isn't even that bad. Um, I was kind of expecting him to be a little bit higher. I mean, he's cheaper than Danny Duffy um, and just a little bit more expensive so, than Lester. So uh, Kluber comes in for me as, as the number one guy, too. Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest with his price, such a big difference from Duffy. It just makes it an easy fade for Duffy. I don't mind Duffy. Um, we'll, we'll get to him in a little bit, but obviously that price tag is certainly more expensive. Yeah, on, on DraftKings. Yeah. At least. Uh, Cardinals and Cubs, you got John Lester facing Carlos Martinez. Cubs are minus 160 favorites. Uh, Lester going up against the Cardinals team that he's pitched well against, um, you know, throughout his time with, with Chicago. I mean, over five starts against St. Louis, 2.59 ERA, uh, averaging pretty much a strikeout per inning there uh, against them, and which is no surprise. Uh, this Cardinals team really isn't that great against left-handers. Obviously, he will have to, to you know, worry about Piscotti and, and obviously – you know, a couple other right-handed bats, but Lester should be able to cruise through for a decent outing. Yeah, to me, uh, Kluber's 1A, and I think Lester's 1B on this slate. Um, obviously, it's difficult to play both guys in the same DraftKings lineup, but it is doable. Uh, but I agree with you. I like Lester. It's a really good matchup. A lot of the Cardinals guys, uh, their good hitters are lefties, so I think he can kind of neutralize those. And like you said, just pitch around Piscotty Holiday, and he should uh, have a pretty good outing. I mean, we've all seen him go up against uh, Cardinals before, and he's had – for the majority of all his starts been really good. So I don't mind him here. I think there's a little more uh, volatility uh, than Kluber, but I think uh, 80 times out of probably 85 or so, he's going to have a solid start against these guys. Yeah, I definitely think so too. And, and you just look at Lester. I mean, um, you know, it struggled a little bit towards the end of the first half, uh, but since the all-star break has been solid, I mean, holding teams to a 261 Woba, um, an ERA 1.1, 1.99 at home this year. So obviously he's enjoyed Wrigley and has pitched really well there. Yeah, absolutely. I, to me, I think there's just a little uh, hesitation just because it is the Cardinals and they could kind of do some damage, but I really have no issues uh, between uh, playing Lester at all. Yeah, definitely. And on the other side, uh, Carlos Martinez obviously would be kind of a big GPP pivot just from the other options. Uh, and this Cubs team, I mean, they haven't really looked great of late. Their their offense has kind of come downwards in the second half. Um, I'm okay with Martinez in, in, in GPP formats, but obviously I think it's kind of a, a really high risk, high reward situation um, that I don't, I don't see myself having a ton of exposure to. It's just more of, you know, maybe one or two lineups. Yeah, absolutely. He's like you said, he's a GPP play um, just because it is still Carlos Martinez, but he doesn't look that good lately. And against this Cubs team, I'm really probably going to stay away from him. Definitely not even going to have any exposure at all cash games, but GPPs, you could throw a couple lineups with him in there. Yeah. Uh, White Sox and Royals, Danny Duffy versus Miguel Gonzalez. And, and Danny Duffy's the guy where, where the, the site pricing kind of matters. I mean, he's 9700 on FanDuel, which is still high, but reasonable for what he's been pitching of late. 12 4 on DraftKings. I think that's where you, you were probably a little bit bothered by, by the price tag. Even though it, it, everything kind of does check off for him, um, I mean, he's just missing a ton of bats. I mean, 14% strikeout rate. 29%. I, he's in, in a, a position where if he does have an outing like he does against the Rays, obviously that's very unlikely, but it could be a, a potential where he does reach double-digit strikeouts. It, it's kind of tough to make up that difference on a four-game slate if you don't have him. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you there. Um, to me, though, just his price tag on DraftKings is too much. FanDuel, I think he's probably my top guy just when you consider the price. I know it's not a huge difference, but I definitely like him there. And like you said, if you don't have him, it might kind of uh, mess up your night. But with that said, I, I think Kluber probably is in the same boat where they both could get uh, pretty much very similar uh, stat lines. Um, the Chicago team is really punchless, and they don't really do much on offense. I think Duffy could have his way against them. Yeah, definitely could. I mean, um, you, you look at, at the Chicago bats, 22.7% strikeout rate against lefties this year. That definitely sits into uh, Duffy's wheelhouse just because, I mean, his strikeout rate nearly uh, 30% this year, which is just kind of crazy from where he was last year. Kind of curious to see what, what's actually happened with him. Um, for me, I mean, he's a guy who I don't mind in GPPs on DraftKings. I can't really see myself feeding him in cash. Um, but 
definitely on FanDuel, I think he's a guy who I'll be looking at a ton. Yeah, absolutely. I think on cash games and uh, DK, you just go down to Kluber and you save that fourteen hundred. Um, but again, because his price is so high on DraftKings, uh, you'll get a little bit potentially lower ownership if you use them in GPPs. So um, compared to Kluber, so I actually for GPPs, I don't mind them. Um, obviously, I'll play them in cash on FanDuel, but DraftKings GPPs. Yeah. Uh, as far as Miguel Gonzalez goes, he's another one of those weaker arms that I'm looking to target against, especially because the Royals offer really a ton of a ton of value bets against him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not much against Gonzalez has somewhat mediocre starts, but it n- never translates to uh, DFS purposes at all. No, and even though he's cheap, I think I'd rather target uh, Eduardo Rodriguez if I really am paying down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he. Eduardo Rodriguez gives you a little bit more upside than uh, Miguel Gonzalez could. Yeah, definitely. So that's going to wrap things up with the pitcher nail down. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all our great tools and content.